Our readings today are the Gospel reading from John, the beginning of the account of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And it's paired with a reading from Acts, an idyllic description of life in the early post-Pentecost community of people of the way. So let's have a look at John. The passage is a continuation of chapter 9 and the account of the man born, born blind. If you recall that passage, and I know you all will, it finishes with Jesus taking a bit of a pop at the Pharisees. It's suggested that the opening of chapter 10 is yet again Jesus taking a pop at the Pharisees with their failure to lead when he makes the comment about a bandit and a thief. As the passage progresses, it becomes clear that the reading that this reading looks at leadership, access, and who will follow. Now, while we might think that the agrarian metaphors are a little outdated, in the first century world, shepherds and shepherding were common parts of life, with both biblical and non-biblical sources using shepherds as metaphors for a leader or a king. The image of Jesus as a shepherd, shepherding his flock, today quite often conjures up sentimental thoughts of images like those portrayed on many a stained glass window. You know the ones. Jesus walking down the rolling green hill, his radiant blondish brown hair flowing gently in the breeze a lamb or a sheep gently draped across his shoulders. Now I've said it before, and I'll say it again and still believe, that if this is where our minds wander, I suggest the best thing to do is imagine that window with a brick being thrown through it. And please, just use your imaginations. In considering leadership, we need to remember that the art of governing people, like that of a shepherd, shepherd in the flock, was hard work. Throughout this account, Jesus mixes his metaphors. He begins as the shepherd, and then he's the gate, and by verse 11, he's the good shepherd. Major reference here to Ezekiel 34. Anywho, each are discrete entities each have their function. And the bottom line is no one metaphor completely captures who Jesus is. A shepherd, his role is one of care and practicality. The flock knowing his voice. As the gate, he becomes the legitimate means of access. Those who hear his voice and enter the sheepfold are offered life, life abundantly. Now the reading from Acts. Today's passage provides a vision of a community that is idyllic and ever so slightly resembling a commune. Nadia Bowles-Weber refers to it as the hippie phase. These early followers are in awe. As the gospel proclaimed, so they did. They sold possessions and goods distributed proceeds to all in need. They spent time together in the temple, breaking bread together and practicing gratitude. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This community was engaged in radical economic sharing that went way beyond charity. And all of this was intertwined with worship. John's Gospel reminds us that in responding to the voice of the shepherd, we're called into relationship with God. We're called into community and offered life, life abundantly. The reading from Acts describes a transformation. It reminds us how radical the community of Christ and life in it actually is. Jesus' Jesus's radical leadership calls for radical new responses. The early community were fed by things they did and the way that they lived. 
and it may seem unrealistic. After all, we live in a society that's dominated by achievement, success and possessions. And this hopeful vision of justice and service can look a bit more like pie in the sky. The reality is we don't need to read much further on into Acts before we see the community begin to fragment. Beginning with the deception of Ananus and Sapphira. But the fragmentation was not from the community's lack of trying to grapple with this new way of being. These followers chose life and liberation in the face of unspoken threat. They refused to be confined or silent. They opted for a life of community and risk. This was a community born out of struggle, born out of suffering, death and new life in Christ. I thought about church and went with the hippie commune metaphor. And I wondered, have all the hippies matured, grown to middle age and beyond, moved to the burbs and begun to worry about the wrong people moving in, begun to fear change, let alone transformation? Have we forgotten the awe and wonder that came the first time we heard the shepherd's voice when the gate opened to welcome us? The death and resurrection of Christ established a new way of being, a way that calls us to follow. It's a way that changes us forever. The life we're offered transcends the rules of authority. The system couldn't and didn't contain or domesticate Christ. If you think about it, perhaps Jesus was a bit of a first century hippie. He probably did have long hair and a beard. But more seriously, his whole life was about love, peace, freedom and radical community and non-violence. Although he may have matured, his way of living didn't change. He remained committed to the vision and values of the kingdom. You see, the whole idea of transformation is not that our outer appearance changes. We all mature and get older. It's about our hearts and our attitudes being transformed. It's about being continually open to hearing the voice of the shepherd. It's about remembering the gate as a means of access regardless of age, gender, sexuality, race, physical ability, financial status. You know the list. The body of Christ is made of many different parts, each unique each with gifts to share. The body of Christ ought to be diverse. The faith we proclaim has for more than 2000 years transformed lives and whole communities. The faith is grounded in love and peace. The communities diverse and inclusive. It was edgy and it was dangerous. I've spent a fair bit of time in lockdown imagining what church might look like when we emerge, wondering how we creatively reimagine being the body of Christ in the CBD here in Brisbane and beyond. Our faith doesn't eliminate risk or the threat of danger. In fact, being a radical community on the edge calls us to take risks to fling open the doors and welcome all. In the world of church, we at St Andrews took a risk, standing for marriage equality and saying yes to conducting weddings for same gender couples, especially as we're one of the few churches in Brisbane and Queensland that have agreed to do so. In taking this risk, we're saying you are loved, respected, and welcomed here. We took a risk when we commenced the community lunch. Once more, we said, you may be vulnerable, you may be homeless, 
you may just be finding the issue of food insecurity a bit too much. You're loved, respected and welcome here. As the body of Christ, we have a choice. We can be the disciples who, after the resurrection, were afraid and confused, locking the doors and staying safe. Or we can unleash our inner hippie, reclaim the awe and wonder. We can listen for the voice of the one who calls and we can emerge as a dynamic and radical community on the edge. One that's centered on prayer, worship, and breaking bread together, knowing when nourished to take the risks and then walk in the way of Christ. Let's pray. Our prayers today come from Nick Tate. Living God, in our hour of need, we turn again to you, for we have nowhere else to turn we thank you that you are not distant from us, but have drawn near in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We pray about this pandemic spreading across our world, remembering all who have lost loved ones and praying for those seriously ill at this time. We remember those countries which are suffering terribly at this time and particularly think of those in the UK, Europe, North America, and the developing world. We pray for doctors and nurses and all in the caring professions who work to help and support people as best they can. We remember those working behind the scenes, testing samples, confirming results, giving information to patients. We uphold others trying to understand the virus better, working to create an effective remedy. We pray for our governments in Canberra and Brisbane as they work with the best medical advice to guide us on how we should respond and what action we should take. May this crisis bring out the best in us, not the worst. Help us to live by faith and not by fear to build bridges, not barriers, and to resist all who would speak ill of any other group. May we not forget our responsibility to one another, not least to the vulnerable and voiceless in our communities. Help us to find ways of keeping in touch and offering reassurance to those with underlying health issues or who feel particularly vulnerable. May congregations find new ways of living through this time. May we not forget our faith, but draw strength from it. We particularly ask you at this time to look after all of those at St Andrews who are in need of comfort and support. God of grace and God of mercy, hear our prayers at this time. Strengthen us by your spirit so that we may carry on our lives as best as we are able, looking out for others, showing love in action, being faithful in prayer, and bringing encouragement, hope, and peace. These prayers we bring to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us prepare for the day we emerge listening for the, what, the voice of the one who calls us, the one who calls us into the life of community, life on the edge, working for peace and justice with love and compassion. May the blessing of God nurture and prepare us. May the blessing of Christ be the voice that calls us to the edge and the food that nourishes us. And may the blessing of the Holy Spirit, Sophia, transform our hearts and minds with her wisdom, freeing us to go the way of Christ. Amen. Amen.